Over the last two years, Ireland, a country of only 5 million people, has taken in around 100,000 people as refugees from Ukraine. In that same time period, it has also taken in a record number of asylum seekers from other parts of the world. Combine this with the housing and cost of living crisis, and the usually incredibly welcoming and charitable disposition of the Irish people has reached its breaking point. This was highlighted in a recent Red Sea poll that showed a whopping 75% of Irish people think we've taken in too many refugees and want the number of arrivals reduced or stopped entirely. So when Michal Martin, the Tanishta, was asked a very basic and good fake question in a recent radio interview about what is one of the most pressing issues in the country, immigration, he responded by insulting the host, saying any anti-immigration sentiments are shocking, anyone who wants to restrict immigration has no humanity, and basically flat out said that it isn't possible to reduce immigration. Let's break this down. The host introduced the issue by asking him a fairly standard question about immigration because he says it's the most requested question by his listeners. Oh, I've asked people to text and over yeah. and over again it's the open border policy. Over 94,000 Ukrainian refugees with all of the trappings that are entitled to them even though they're not part of the European Union. But the international protection order applications are up 186% since 2019. 61% of those coming into the country have no documentation. Um, and they get, and they're an immediate cost to the state. They're coming from countries that would be regarded as, as quite safe. And people are very, very worried or angry or annoyed that that kind of money is being spent when it could have been spent helping Irish people if you had the will to do it before the war in the Ukraine. Martin hems and haws a bit and then asks the host what he would do. Well, what would you do? What would I do? No, so I just, yeah, I would I'm, close the borders. That's shocking. Why? Have you any humanity? First thing to note is this is a textbook deflection tactic from a very experienced politician. See, so instead of actually having to answer the difficult question he was asked and explain any solutions or answers the government has to this massive societal issue, he asked the host what he would do. He does this so he can go on the offence and attack any errors or holes in the host position and thus come across as competent, informed and benevolent on the issue while providing no answers himself. He has put the host in the position of answering the difficult question he himself was asked. It's a clever move, however, it reveals Martin has actually no answers on the immigration issue at all. All he can do is attack people who disagree with him and deflect the question. That's shocking. Why? Have you any humanity? Here Martin is calling not just the host, but by extension the vast majority of Irish people who want to reduce immigration as horrendous. He thinks that anyone who wants to fix the corrupt and regularly scammed asylum system and to stop billions in Irish taxes going to fund this shambles are morally backward people who are devoid of humanity. He's attempting to shame the host and you out of this perfectly ordinary and sensible position. Martin then goes on to detail some of the horrible things that have happened in Ukraine and basically uses this as a justification for Ireland having to take in, as of yet, a limitless number of people. Let's take Ukraine. People were bombed, their houses were bombed, energy was bombed. The aftermath of that war, people had to leave certain localities because of the brutality of the war. Yeah, I, I went to Busha, I went to Irpin, I saw photographs of men with their hands tied behind the back, bullets in their heads and murdered. He implies that anyone who thinks we let in more people than we can cope with wants to leave people in their homes to be bombed to bits. You're saying we should let them there to be bombed I'm, to bits? I, no, I'm not saying that at all. Well, what are you saying? I, I'm, I'm saying I mean, what are you saying? I'm like? saying when, when... Now anyone can have sympathy for the horrific situation in Ukraine. But the fact remains that this is not the only humanitarian crisis on earth. As of now, there are an estimated 1 billion people living on less than $1 a day, 700 million people in extreme poverty. According to the 2022 Global Report on Food Crises, in 2021, 193 million people experienced food insecurity at a crisis level or worse, and an all-time high of 49 million people are at risk of falling into outright famine. It also projects that the outlook for the 2022 report is grim with the situation expected to worsen. So I could just as easily say, what would you do? Leave these people to starve to death, Tarnishta? That's shocking. Do you have any humanity? See how easy it is to scold people and not provide solutions? Because Martin sees no issue in not taking in hundreds of thousands of starving poor people from the likes of South Sudan, Yemen, the Congo or Ethiopia. This is because he knows that with a billion people living on less than a dollar a day and hundreds of millions in food crises, the vast majority of them would love to show up to Ireland and be entirely provided for. But of course, if that happened, the country would break overnight. So he understands perfectly well that immigration can be a detriment to the Irish people if the numbers are too high and doesn't permit the vast majority of poor, starving, war-torn people to come here. But with Ukraine, 
Despite Ireland having no significant shared history and not even being an EU country with us, we must have no limit to the people coming or you're a bad person with no humanity who's letting innocent people die. Even though that is exactly what he does with every other crisis around the globe. And if this wasn't enough, Martin also goes on to say that it's basically impossible to stop immigration anyway, and that we are essentially powerless, so we should just get used to it. International protection orders no, is an open no, border but if, they not, can, no, if they come in without that, documentation. That's all kind of simplistic stuff. We had that in Britain with conservative parties saying we'll do this and we'll do that. They couldn't stop any migration. You know why? People will do anything to leave some of these countries because of war, because of conflict. So, because the Tories never actually wanted to reduce immigration and lied to the public about it to get votes, then Ireland cannot have borders. Even though countries that aren't islands and have much harder borders to defend, like Poland and Hungary, seem to manage it quite well. How many refugees has Poland taken? Zero. And you're proud of that? If you are asking me, if you're, if you're asking me about Muslim, uh, Muslims illegal immigration, None, not even one, will come to Poland. And when the host asks Martin to do his job and actually represent the best interests of the Irish people who elected him and say, we can't do any more as immigration is too high to cope with, he says, but it's hard. I'm saying, I mean, that, what are you saying, I'm like? saying when, when do you say enough is enough? I'm, saying that, I'm saying that people... Yeah. I'm sorry, say that again? I'm but saying, that, I'm saying that people... Oh, is it hard? Do you have to make a tough decision? Well, I'm so sorry for you. How on earth could you have known being the leader of an entire country might entail actually having to make the occasional hard decision? This is what your job is! You've been the Taoiseach before! You're the tarnished and now! You're running to be Taoiseach again! And your best response is to say, it's hard? To say no to unlimited migrants into a small nation? Jesus man, there's bad answers, but this is, this is just pathetic! But luckily for Martin and every politician in the Irish government, when all of the disingenuous non-arguments against mass immigration fail them, there's always one ace in the hole they have. One surefire argument that can justify unlimited immigration and win any debate. And that of course is... If international obligations... We have international obligations on... In line with our international obligations. With international obligations. And we have international obligations. Our international obligations. International obligations. Have international obligations. National legal obligations. Our international obligations. National obligations. Ah yes, international obligations. Has there ever been a more perfect summation of everything that is and has been wrong with this country for decades? The elevating of international obligations by policymakers as their primary concern shows where their true allegiances lie. You don't live in a sovereign nation with its own goals, identity and self-interest. You live in a vassal state where the needs of global elites, the supranational bodies like the EU and the UN and global finance will always take precedence over you. It doesn't matter that 75% of the population that politicians are elected to represent are against the policy. If international obligations. It doesn't matter that housing is unaffordable and in chronic shortage. We have international obligations on. It doesn't matter that we have record homelessness while migrants from all four corners of the globe are being put up in hotels and having everything paid for. Have international obligations. It doesn't matter that Irish students are having their accommodation taken from them. National obligations. It doesn't matter that small rural areas are being transformed utterly by unsustainable levels of immigration. With international obligation. It doesn't matter that people are out protesting against large migrant centres being set up in their communities. We have international obligations. It doesn't matter that immigrants are committing some of the most horrific crimes we've seen in this country in years. International obligation. It doesn't matter that there's a cost of living crisis and that elderly are having to sit in the cold in winter because the cost of heating their house is just too much, while billions in their taxes must be spent housing migrants because, you guessed it, international obligations. The interests of the people of this country, no matter how uniform, will not be represented if they go against the will of supranational global institutions like the EU. I think the man whom this video is dedicated to said it best himself. Let there be no doubt about where Ireland stands. We want nothing to do with a backward looking idea of sovereignty. We remain absolutely committed to the ideals of the European Union. From the horse's mouth to your ears, the government of Ireland sees your sovereignty, your right to self-determination and the centuries long struggle for Irish independence from foreign rule as backwards. Martin said this in 2017 and the government actions over the last seven years showed this wasn't just posturing for the EU in the wake of Brexit. He meant every single word.
When given the choice, they would much rather throw the Irish people under the bus than have a few uncomfortable meetings or awkward silences on their next big trip to Brussels or New York. They will do anything to ingratiate themselves to the international community because as they've said themselves, that's the people who their primary obligation is to.